Hello and welcome to a very special conversation with a very special man. I've been documenting the story of Odisha sport and even done a book on that. But trust me, if you're an Indian sports fan or if you follow sports from around the world, come to this state and you will know a revolution is going on. Truly, the Kalinga Stadium precinct is unique in the world. And I'm talking about Australia, United Kingdom, United States, Canada. India is showing a different color through Odisha. The prism of sport is fantastic. And one of the people behind it, along with obviously the Chief Minister Naveen Patnaik, is Mr. Pandya. Thank welcome. You. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks for coming. And it's such a welcome break in between all this political... No, I, I have nothing rigor. to do with, with <laughs> politics and don't understand. But what you are doing with sport is magnificent. I mean, 2017 Asian Athletics Championships and now... 90 days. It is a revolution, the 90 days challenge. Can you tell me what sport means to you and Odisha? Uh, personally, sports mean means a lot for me because I was in sports hostel, trained to be a professional athlete. So, a lot of passion towards sports for me personally. And uh, I know the ecosystem very well. So, that helps. For the state as a whole, the Chief Minister has made a vision that uh, Investment in sports is investment in youth and investment in youth is investment in future. So you should not see sports as a standalone vertical. You have to link it with youth and you have to see a broader goal of a great future. That's how he links it. Otherwise, if you suddenly say that, okay, you are spending 1,400 crores in sports, it will sound, oh, why yes, said You have to link it with the youth, empowering the youth and building a great future. That's what it is, Mr. Pandian, because ultimately, it is not simply what we see on the field of play. It's about character building. Absolutely. It's about, you know, everything. Dedication, but, sacrifice, being punctual, that discipline, burning desire, all those characters which make winners are even if you lose, you are still a sports person. You don't crib. You don't, uh, you don't go into negative aspects of a human. So when I look at India and I'm not, I'm putting this on record and I'm talking about all states. Odisha is now the hub of Indian sport. How proud does that make you? Oh, it, I think the, the whole state is very proud of uh, what Navin Babu has done for sports. Perhaps the country as well. Because after so many years, Indian hockey team okay. went and won a medal in uh, uh, Olympics. And the women's team also qualified for semis. Uh, in fact, I'll uh, quote a small anecdote. Uh, a student who was studying in uh, US, he was there, I, I believe, first year, there is a little bit of ragging. So, they were. he said that, uh, which, which part of India are you from? He tried to explain, but they couldn't understand what. So, after three months or four months, in the common room, all of them were watching TV in a big screen. The World Cup matches were going on and uh, US was playing against some country. So, this boy went there and said, this is Odisha. <laughs> so, they all cheered him up and said, wow, what? how, how beautiful it looks the hockey field and the audience and the spectators, it was brilliant. So let me take that question now. When I go to Raurkela, all of a sudden I see the Birsha Munda Stadium and I'm like, real? <laughs> Architectural marvel, 20,000 plus people. I see it here. And did it, and it was built in record time, post-Covid. Plus during Covid, yeah. exactly. I mean, tell me about it. I mean, this is unreal that nine from 90 days challenge to that Birsha Munda and you were central to that. Please tell me. So, Honorable Chief Minister has his prin the governance principle of 5T. The first T is teamwork. He wants everyone to own up a project. All the stakeholders should be active partners. So, that is the teamwork. Technology, he wants to use the best of technology. Like for example, in Raukila Stadium when we were building, we were going for concrete structures. Then we realized with concrete structures, you will overshoot the timelines. Correct. So, immediately fabrication, prefabricated structures were got and the latest technology, whatever was needed, was used in building that stadium, including making it one of the highly accessible stadiums in the world. Yes. Both for visually impact as well as uh, wheelchair bound yes. differently abled. So, technology. Then, uh, <coughs> transparency. He makes the whole process very transparent. Every process, he wants it to be very transparent so that there are no questions and there are no delays. And fourth is time. In government, generally, we don't do a time audit. You do a legal audit, you do financial audit, but you don't do time audit. Here, our chief minister inculcates the value of time. So you have to complete in 18 months means you should plan to complete it in 16 months and you have a buffer of two months. 
So all these leading to transformation. So if you have a bigger goal, a transformative goal, the chief minister asks us to follow these things and it falls in place. No, I mean, People uh, have worked really hard for this. Yes, and I've seen, I mean, from supply chain problems and, you know, pitches not coming to be able to deliver that World Absolutely. Cup. Absolutely. Then you did a new airport. I, I, I'm again saying, because I followed that World Cup, I was here, I followed all the games. Incredible work. And even when India was not playing, to put it on record, 20,000 people watching hockey. Come on, that is what India is all about and Odisha has done that. How, what, how important is hockey to you, Mr. Pandian? Because even the CM has played hockey and we've seen those photos. How important is hockey for you and Odisha? See, hockey as a game was always popular in Odisha. And uh, we have uh, produced a lot of international players, yeah. including captains, both yeah. in men and women. So people have a strong connect with the hockey in Odisha. In addition to that, the perspective which Honorable Chief Minister gave that what role it played in the Indian national movement. Correct. India's identity when it was a British India was because of hockey Correct. in the world uh, stage. You were winning medals after medals, gold medals in world stage. So that made all of us proud at that point of time when you are fighting against uh, colonial rule. Yeah. So 1928, 1932, 1936, hockey gold medals. 36 in Berlin in front of Hitler, 8-1 in the final, the Anshan's team. 48 against England, if you want a nationalist moment for an Indian team to win 4-0 against England in England at the London Olympics. That's what Mr. Pandian is talking about. But, you know, hockey, I still understand that there's culture, Sundargarh, so many pitches. I was having dinner with Sunil Chetri and Igor Stimach, rather breakfast with Sunil and dinner with Igor. And they are telling me, so I said, you're training at Kalinga Sand Stadium? I said, no, we are in the hotel and from here with 200 meters and two brilliant pitches, what amazing facility. Now there's football, there's gymnastics, there's indoor stadium, there's aquatics, there's badminton, there's sports science. What are you doing? <laughs> Tell me about this. This, this Actually, revolution. the entire ecosystem of sports the Chief Minister wanted to be of world class. And CM's dream for Indian sports or for sports from Odisha is that Indian national flag should fly high in the Olympic podium and Indian national anthem should be played. Indian should walk one inch taller on that day and Odisha should have played a role in it. That's it. One day, Matra. Brilliant, brilliant. More than 90 indoor stadiums. I mean, we, we, when I was doing the book on Odisha and sport, I've seen it myself. More than 90 indoor stadiums from, from across, you know, swimming centers, hockey centers, remotest places. And 25 Astra Tough hockey training centers. Can you talk about that? The, the, the impact and the hostels, which are clean. I went and even checked the bathrooms. You all had given me access because that's where the difference happens. Absolutely, absolutely. Fantastic. Can you tell me about the importance given to grassroots? First, I should congratulate the team who is behind it. The ones who are implementing from the secretary to his team, to all the foundations who are involved. The Abhinavindra Foundation, the JSW Foundation, all of them who are involved in giving a professional touch to all that what we are doing. Uh, in fact, uh, in every urban center, we have got an indoor stadium now. Yes. Multi-purpose indoor stadium where you have uh, weights for training, where you have a shuttle badminton court, two courts or six courts based on the population. And you can do yoga as well. You can do meditation as well. So both fitness, sports and in bigger places we have for volleyball, basketball and swimming pools have come up throughout. And we have a grassroots program where 10,000 kids on swimming and 5,000 kids on uh, hockey. Grassroots program. Complete professional training. This is where, you know, it's like a gestation period at the moment. So wait for this revolution to unfold and you will see India emerging as a sporting superpower. That's the idea. Weightlifting, I've seen athletics, everything, yes. you and, name it. And you're seeing athletes already come up. Jilly Dalbera, who's she from? Where is she coming from? Go and check her Sunelita Topo in hockey. And you will see one after the other people from Odisha coming to the top. But also, I was Did you visit her... the Sports Science Centre? Yes, I did. I mean, we World are class. Unbelievable. World class. Yeah. Yeah. Arsene Wenger had come. It was floored. He honestly said that I haven't seen something like this and many Olympic uh, Olympians have come and said that we have travelled all over the world. Not so scientific, so professionally run something like this we have seen. True because Futuristic. Ab Abhinav and I have been working on sports science for a long time okay. and when he, he was and every time I have spoken to him and he said, you know, the support that I get in Odisha, I don't get in any part of the world. So. The, the love for Odisha and the affection for both uh, Mr. Pa, you know, the CM and yourself is evident. But tell me, I was reading your manifesto. There is a significant thrust or focus on youth development for the next five years. Can you talk to me about that? So, you might have heard about gender budget. You might have heard about governments doing farmers budget. 
chief minister decided we should have a youth budget youth budget means you create a ecosystem for the youth mm -hmm. where the youth can dream big and they are empowered to achieve their dreams so in this ecosystem of youth sports will play a major role you will get investments for providing jobs you will get skills skilled in odisha we want to make it as a brand so everything related to youth take it to the next level make them globally competitive make them compassionate individuals competitive individuals so, so that's what we are trying to do and sports also helps in this of course and and this large youth development program which includes you know the nuao program uh, 60000 teams now participating across the state clearly this is an all encompassing kind of vision absolutely how tough was it to because sport is not in our dna in india right i mean and we face it we are not a sport culture like the west but to be able to do this in a state which was not known for sport even what one decade back how difficult has this been it 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 was a challenge indeed but uh, people supported people's representative supported and uh, cm's vision was understood by everyone so we could crack it and the team is very good the ones who are implementing it in the ground and all of us are connected with that passion to excel finally sports is about passion yeah, to excel seen. so that really gears up when mr jetly called 91 days exactly before the asian athletic championships and told that see jharkhand had bidded for it they were building the infrastructure for 3 years they couldn't complete now i spoke to many states they raised their hands no we can't do it in 90 days navin babu is it possible for you to host this event in 90 days having 38 countries we didn't have a synthetic track at that time a functional synthetic track which was certified we didn't have flood lights in our stadium so jetli ji called and told it's india's pride at the international level 38 countries suddenly some other country getting it means that india is not able to host a international event how bad it would be so jet late jetli ji had called cm had a meeting with all with all everyone they said that oh it will be summer we will have water problem how do you import tracks from international uh, internationally you have to import the tracks flood lights have to come how do you do all these with but cm said no i want it to be done whatever it needs we'll get it done and we have to deliver it for the country so it was done in 90 days it was done and i have actually documented that story and let me also say this mr pandian said about 98% there's divine blessings on on this because the <laughs> night before Absolutely. it rained for 4 hours the volunteers could not train the 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 ceremony had to be called off as in the training ceremony people couldn't even get into their ceremonial clothes because it will get wasted so and, and we all know in bengal and odisha if it starts to rain what happens but on that day when the teams yeah. came in speak and span and general dalan the hosts for the next games put it on record we can't match odisha that's what he's talking about last two questions rugby where was india all of a sudden <laughs> i see a hoopi maji a dumuni marandi and they come and tell me you know what the whole village now <laughs> plays rugby how is that happening it's that same passion which connected and rahul was a good sport to yeah. get into it and uh, came met uh, the honorable chief minister met the team inspired everyone to be a part of the national rugby movement and it clicked and our tribal kids are so good at uh, rugby they lapped it up and we'll have very good results soon already we are doing very well both men and women yeah asian games and indian rugby team participating is a massive <laughs> movement plus two mr pandian one i have rarely seen as as kind of focus on the paralympic movement as i see here people with disability people with you know special abilities and this integration that you all have done is that something that is part of your vision as well it's part of cm's vision for the entire state inclusive he believes in inclusivity in fact if i would like to give a small example yes please i was collector of a district called mayurbanj we 15 18 years back so our district got i was awarded by the president for the best district in dif, uh, disability rehabilitation so the chief minister called and congratulated he was the first person to congratulate not any bureaucrats or anyone he called and congratulated and then next question he asked me was how do we implement it throughout the state that is his commitment for the differently abled he runs that extra mile whether it is tribals who are vulnerable primitive tribals are the differently abled and para olympic movement he has taken it to heart in fact if you see that sports science center 
mm-hmm. it has got a good component on uh, differently able at, for athletes i think we have perhaps the largest uh, treadmill for uh, differently able wheelchair uh, able uh, sports persons so equal importance or more importance is given for paralympics as well and again people like pramod bhagat from this state go and ask him and the kind of support that he has received from the government is extraordinary final question you know one thing is to start a movement one is to sustain and carry forward every i am not a political expert but everyone tells me all will win the elections because of the work that you have done fingers crossed for you all but sport long term you will keep investing we are on record this india needs odisha to lead this sport absolutely i think cm has made it irreversible now the kind of commitment he has made for sports it will go on and we'll see the indian flag flying high in the olympic podium sooner than later and it, odisha would have played its bit in that igniting the fire in the youth of india i'll end there paris olympics 50 days to go if there is one state that has actually led the indian sporting revolution and led the way it is odisha mr pandian has not taken credit for it let us give him the credit uh-huh. because he has been pivotal in it obviously under the aegis of the chief minister but this is a movement that we are seeing in odisha from top to bottom there's no division everyone working for one cause the indian sports revolution congratulations thank and you. keep going because thank this gives you. us a lot of thank you. thank you thank you very very much thanks a lot